Hey, what is going on guys? It's Ben from the Parker Brothers and welcome back to another fishing video. Today you join me down the famous linear fisheries and yes, you guessed it, I'm back on B1. Now to be honest with you, I couldn't believe my luck this morning. I turned up with my brother, I'm also with Lee because we're doing some product shots for the Parker Bates website and also our social medias. Now, we turned up about half past seven and there was about five cars in front of us. We all drove around in your typical B1 sort of fashion. Everybody everybody filters round and then turns right. The first car park, everybody turns right and goes in that B1 bit. So I said to Tom, turn left. So I turned left. Tom drove his car up separately, so we drove in. Anyway, I've drove round, come to the point swims, and they're free. <laughs> I'm like, what? never fished these pegs before. I've, I say I have, but a long, 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 long time ago. So um, I'm in the I'm, I'm down the opposite end of the lake to where I normally fish. I've actually got Matt Catches over to my left as well, which is one of the Parker Bates ambassadors and also a YouTuber as well, guys. And if you haven't seen Matt Catches, you need to go check him out. Top proper top class bloke and also a very very good angler and um, someone who's sort of supported us for a long time now. So definitely go check him out. So there it is. That's that's who I am. That's where I am. Sorry, that's who I'm with. And I'm here for the next 48 hours. I am off early Thursday. Now it's Tuesday today, so I'm off th Thursday um, morning. So I'm going to be here for 48. And like I said, my main priority is, is to get a load of pictures for our social media. But what I am going to do is, I've, well, I have, I've, I've binged three zigs out, three different depths, um, right in that centre middle bowl. And I am just going to play that for a couple of hours, obviously, whilst I'm locked onto the water and keeping an eye on and trying to digest and sort of take in what's going on out there. Um, to see any small signs, shows, to act upon it as soon, well, as soon as, as, soon as possible, really, and, and do something about it. Otherwise, you're just sat there behind stale rods and you're just never going to catch anything so that that's my thoughts on that and also the fish do like to move around on it and it's very apparent when they're over your spot so there it is very quickly if you haven't seen me before my name's ben and this is the parker brothers youtube channel youtube channel so what we do is we upload every, every sunday 7 30 without fail but then we also upload on a wednesday as well we've started doing that um, more frequently and we do how to shorter videos and then what we can do is on a sunday we do a live premiere so everybody joins in we've done in excess of 420 people before 420 is our record so if you are free on a sunday come and join the wave the parker Bates wave and um enjoy the video together so there it is exciting stuff like i said it's gonna it's not gonna be a bitty video but i'm gonna do my best to sort of keep in the loop of what i'm doing throughout the day over the next couple of days but throughout the day today particularly um i'm gonna do what i can to keep you in the loop because obviously i've got a lot on my play and i've got a lot to do with everything else so there it is before we start this video guys give us a thumbs up make sure you comment down below smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any videos going forward and hopefully myself lee my brother can bring you an absolute banger <laughs> so here it is this is the peg i think it's 16 17 18 and like i said real good peg smack bang in the middle of b1 so you've got all pegs up here all pegs down here and we've got that sort of middle bit so there it is three rods and i've binged them out sort of this sort of area again nothing real um clever if i'm honest because i haven't really seen much i've only just turned up and i have been locked onto the water and i've seen a few shows right right over the back typical and um some just slightly more to the right which is out my water probably more than halfway up the up the lake so that is all i've seen so i've got lee over here with his posh bivy and you're probably thinking where's that bivy come from now theo's lent me this guy so thanks very much theo big shout out to you here they are here they are. Here we go. Yeah, so here it is. We've got the wraps over here. This is Lee's swim. He's got two rods out at the moment and he's again fishing very similar. He's on the bottom, I'm on zigs to try and gauge what the fish are doing because then whoever starts catching, we can start flick onto that and then help each other out. And that's what it's all about. But if I come out here, it's quite nice, quite personal, these swims. You don't get much traffic. So as you can see, you got there and that is the other end. So there, there it is. Oh, and this is another thing as well. We've got to be off by Thursday, nine o'clock, which is perfect. Absolutely perfect. It's worked, worked a treat. It really has. So that is the peg, and hopefully we can make it happen. Come on, the beast of brains nose. <laughs> so there it is. I'm fishing maggots on the top of the zigs. A little bit of black foam, 
between seven and ten maggots absolute game changer this time of year and to be fair all year round but what i do feel is gives you an edge when fishing zigs to have that little bit of movement on the top of them all i've done is is just flossed it flossed them on because to be honest with you i messed up and i didn't bring any cotton and thread with me i prefer to do that because it keeps the keeps the maggots alive that little bit longer being that it's a smaller diameter than floss but that is going out there come on <laughs> So I'm just prepping myself and Lee's bait now. So what I've done is I've put half a pot of magic dust in. In here you've got some 18s, some dumbbells, there's some 10s in here, some 14s. Like I said, a bit of it. Oh, primarily fruit and nut, and there's also some chops. But there was a lot of stuff in here that was cooked yesterday. Leftovers, not quite kilo bags and stuff. So I thought, you know what, I'll bring that for me and Lee. So we've literally got exactly the same each. So I'm going to mix that in well in a second and I'm going to add a bottle of the OG fruit and nut sauce and I'm going to do exactly the same as this one. Again, magic dust there on the side, I'm going to mix in in a second. 18s, 14s, 10s. Lovely and soft, nice and fresh. And that is exactly what I'm going to do. Again, add that for both of us. We're both fishing on the same page and fishing the same bait. Happy days. I'll do that and I'll touch base here in a second. There's a couple of extras. What I'm going to do is just before I put the sauce in, I brought some 10 mils. It's a kilo there of the OG fish. 10 millers i've got a bag each there so i'll put a bag in in each pot and also the yellow stuff you can't beat a bit of sweet corn in your mix so again we've brought loads of this with us i'm gonna put a bag of that in each as well and again i'll show you in a second happy days so there it is that is the end mix guys just with that extra bit of red fleck in there of the 10 millers i do like that and i'm literally gonna fish i can fish pop-ups wafters over the top of that tonight probably fish pop-ups because i know there's a lot of craze in here but the magic dust there all the little food particles stuck to it absolutely lovely dumbbells coming through a lot of hole baits and that is my mix for the next 48 hours happy days it's actually worked in our favor and uh Tom and Lee are just round here. Look at this for a setup. We've got it all going on. He's got his laptop down there. What we need to get done. Look at that, mate. Look at that for a Parker Bates buffet, baby. <laughs> Look at that. All you can eat. All you can eat, yeah. yeah. The freshest bait in the game with a view. And there is B2. Lovely, jubbly. Happy days. Well, that's them zigs played around with for a couple of hours and nothing, not, not a thing really. I'm not really seeing much show at all. It's been quite quiet across the board. The thing I would say is that end looks quite muddy when we first come in, which I didn't tell you. Obviously, we dropped the stuff off, but then I had a quick look and it was looking quite muddy down the end, meaning whether they're pluming up, having a feed and discolouring the water, I don't know. But yeah, same again, Lee's side here. So definitely going to put some bait out tonight because I don't think they're as high up as maybe I thought they were. Um, but yeah, product shoots are going well behind. Like I said, that bait there, festering and infusing if you like. <laughs> but yeah, just buzzing to be back out. Quarter past one. Come on, B1. Right, well, I've just um, been playing about with my dig, my my dig, my zig um, depths. Now, I've spoke about this before on the channel. Now, I like to make my zig straight up, so I make them straight up. I'm not a massive fan of adjustables, so I've got my zig like so. Whatever it is, I always start really high. Now, this is an old zig that I was using on a previous session um, a few days back, anyway. So what I always do is I sort of start off at say, if I'm starting from 12, I'll make a 12 foot zig and then I'll take off foot by foot by foot. But if you make a straight up zig, all you've got to do is it takes seconds because literally all you do is just pull the plastic back, cut off what you want and then just put another loop on the end and pull, pull the rubber back up, clip her on, you're away. So it's not everybody's cup of tea, but a little tip of mine and something I've done for a very, very long time. And like I said, finishing them off with maggots on the end, they get that little bit of movement, smell, extra attraction is an absolute game changer if you're coming to b1 and you're not bringing zigs with you 
say no more. So that that's my thoughts, and that is just another little thing. How I how how I fish my zigs as a general, no matter what they come on. Start high, cut them back, and then work off the back of that. Happy days. Right, so next thing I wanted to touch on was another little purchase of mine. I say another little purchase, something that I've had now for a couple of months, probably about four or five months. And um, Kevin Bone, I think it was off the top of my head, got me into this. Um, I've always sharpened my hooks, but I've done it manually. And um, I'm not, I, I might have been Kevin, but anyway, Nash Pinpoint. I don't know if anybody's seen one of these before, but what a bit of kit that is, and probably one of the best things I feel Nash have brung out. Um, absolutely great bit of kit believe it or not i actually paid 50 quid for this and the clamp and i know they're about 100 and something so i got an absolute bargain on it but to be honest with you i don't think the guy in the tackle shop knew what he was selling because i think it was sat in there for ages it was like how much is that a uh, pinpoint thing there you go he goes what's that i said that that one in the box there mate the hook sharp and he said 50 quid i went yeah no problem mate and I, i've never given someone 50 quid so quick so <laughs> with this it's got like a on and off bit so you can turn it on and off you charge it with a USB, it's got a, a block at the top that you can put your hook on, you know, it. put your hook on the side of it and sharpen it off and obviously it can go both ways depending on what how you want to do your hook and obviously then you've got the clamp there to then put your hook into and then sharpen them off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sharpen one of my rigs now and I'll get back to you in a second. Now the ideal scenario um, with these is obviously sharpen the hook before you start putting all your gubbins on the end if you like but what you can do is if you haven't done that like I have because I've got a, a hook pre-made here and over a, quite a few times of using this now I'm getting more and more used to it obviously a penny or a pair of scissors and that goes in and you can lock it off so then you've got the hook in there kind of like so like that right and then what I do is So the wheel is going this way and I'm going to put it So again, you're getting a general idea there. I'm not going to bore you with that, but what I tend to do is I take the front off and I just run it down a few times, um, trying to keep it as straight as humanly possible. And I also use, I have got a, an eye as well microflying glass, the microfly glass, I don't even know how you say it. So I can look in through an eyepiece and just make sure that is 150%. But you can keep playing, I mean, everybody's got their own ways. We say, oh, I wouldn't do it like that, I wouldn't do it like this, but that's just my way of doing it. And um, it works for me and I can get them like a razor and I can run it over my nail and it literally hurts my nail as I rub them over. So Nash Pinpoint, again, not one to plug companies that aren't producing very good things and this in my eyes is a very good thing and, and and something you need in your armory if you like fishing um <laughs> like fishing if you're one of these people that does not want to lose that fish you've been waiting for for two years maybe it's a target fish maybe it's a fish that doesn't get caught very often and the last thing you'd want to do is lose it because that hook point wasn't sharp or it's done you like that so with that mind reassurance of I know that I'm fishing a needle point hook every single time without fail, I can sit behind them rod sit behind them rods with confidence every time and know that I'm happy the worst feeling in the world I said this to T the worst feeling in the world is when you put your rods out and you're going oh, oh I'm not 100% if you're not 100% running back in go again um, that's my personal opinion on it but again don't want to waffle but there you go a bit more of an insight on the nash pinpoint what a bit of kit tom just give me a little parcel he said i'll finish with this now you can have oh cheers tom cheers mate so these are 500 gram bags and they're 249 at the parker bait store little bags with a little sticker on to keep our cost down obviously as well as yours and the cheapest you're going to find himalayan pure 100 percent natural himalayan dark pink rock salt the royals royce oh the rolls royce the rock salt world and definitely an edge pre-spawn um is, is is a massive massive edge but all year round so that's going straight in my basket some of that in there half in there half of me half of lee happy days coffee duty and i've pulled out the aero press and this is a wacky in the face coffee six extra strong and when i say strong it is strong now a full video will be coming on these soon guys great bit of kit i've been using them for a couple of months now if you're a coffee connoisseur and you really love your coffee and um <laughs> honestly this will change your coffee your coffee outlook on life shall we say so in a second i'm going to go around i'm going to give um 
Lee one of these and I'm gonna see what he thinks because I know how, I know it's gonna blow his head off. <laughs> I've just made their coffees. They approve. <laughs> Done Tom and Lee one. Look at this mate, look at this. That wind's turned and it's thumping, thumping down. Well I say thumping, it's coming in down this end. So if this continue, continuously keeps coming like this, that is a very, 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 very good sign. So, there's a smile on the face. Keep coming this way, wind, and bring the fish with you. <laughs> All right, still looking onto the water over there, but just quickly, I'm just gonna go over to Tom and Lee and see what they're up to over here. Oh Christ, like I said, I showed you earlier, he's got all of his lighting gear, it's all fancy stuff. I feel well out of my depth, to be honest. All right then, Tommy, mate. Any insights on anything? Anything different? What you got? Uh, so we've just finished shooting for the paste, the magic dust, and our match the hatch hook baits. So we've got some paste there, he's just mentioned. So this is the fish paste. We're just about to, <laughs> oh, look at just about to move on to these bad boys. So for anyone that's watched the channel or watched the Instagram, you might have seen a slight little insight to these a couple of days ago. But So these are our new uh, potent pineapple, so a bit of smell of vision smell. There. Oh. <laughs> they so do really, smell they're, really, they're really a really strong, potent pineapple flavour. Mm -hmm. They're going to come in mixed tubs, or they might come in separate tubs, we're unsure at the moment. Let us know in the comments down below if you'd rather them in a, a mixed tub or a separate tub. Okay. Um, I know some people might like the oranges, some might like the yellows. Um, they come in a 15 mil, they're an ultra buoyant pop-up. They stay, stay buoyant for three days plus without any problems. Um, really strong in flavour and they will come into the, to the uh, website in the next few weeks. Happy days, happy days. And like I said guys, they smell fantastic. And this is something that, how, how, many, how many emails, Tom, do we get a week asking about high-vis pop-ups? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> quite yeah, a few, quite, don't quite we, mate? Few, quite a few. But yeah, so we're trying something a little bit different. They are pineapple, not fruit and nut or not fish. Um, again, let us know what you think and yeah and from there happy days cheers thanks for that mate there you go guys a little bit of an insight of what tom and lee are up to over here thank you <laughs> been getting they've been getting some footage of the flat spot over there so no thanks very much lads so i'm just doing my rods for this evening at the moment and my mate matt catches over there and his his uh youtube is at the top of the screen now the main man himself there he is my brother so yeah plan of action is um, I'm gonna fish two on a spot tonight sort of out here and Lee's gonna fish two so we're gonna have four rods on a spot and I'm gonna fish a single zig at range um, on my right hand rod and that <laughs> is I feel sort of most confident going into the night and that's what I'm gonna do and if that doesn't happen tonight I can go back into to sorry go go into tomorrow think about what I'm gonna do and then change in the evening if I need to so that is the plan of action Definitely need to get some bait out with Lee, but we're gonna again we're gonna work together with that, probably spawn together. I actually saw a fish show just over to my left, more Lee's water, two at the same time, because Lee gave me a heads up, looked over, I saw him clear as day. So they are out there. Um, I just hope they pull that little bit more this way going into this evening. And the lake today, by the way, I've spoken to Matt, has not done one bite. <laughs> it's done three fish in the last 24 hours, and they've come from over in the corner. How mad's that? B1 definitely not producing. Come on. guys so Lee's kindly um, holding the camera behind very productive day um, got loads of bits done and now it's time for myself and Lee to just whoo, 
I'll chill out a little bit. Rods are out behind me, and again, apologies about the light, and I know this footage isn't the best footage in the world, but rods I've just put out. I had a bit of an issue. It happens to the best of us. I've snapped off. I lost a spot. <laughs> But in the end, we found out what it was, mate. It was the, um, what do you want to call it? The leader, leader knot. Wasn't it? The leader, leader knot and the leader, but we've nailed it now. We can move forward, happy man, <laughs> and not have any frap ups or spom losses, shall we say. So I've put about, I don't know, 15 spoms have been on the spot, give or take, something like that. But they're only small ones, but I think that's enough to get a bite. I've got two rods absolutely on the money out there, and they must be about a foot apart. My right hand rod, like I mentioned earlier, well, I don't know if I did, my right hand rod's on a zig at range, and I'm going to leave it at that. It's quite a high, quite a high zig, it's sitting quite high in the water. So there it is. I'm going to leave it at that. We're going to get some takeaway later, which I'm looking forward to. Shame we ain't got any beverages, but we're going to have a coffee. So I'm going to leave it at that, and uh, see you in a bit. Happy days. Proper little feast going on. Lee's over there. Matt's joined us. He's reeled his rods in. Look at this. Pizza. Tan what, you got a tandoori bad boy? Yeah, tandoori. Hot tandoori. <laughs> hot tandoori. Look at that. Looks banging. Yeah, it looks Terrible video in there. <laughs> and then I've got a barbecue. What was it? What was it? Something barbecue? And uh, hot and spicy, and then we, me and Lee went off. Happy days, lovely jubbly, and I can't show you the view because it's pitch black. There's a lovely moon up there though. <laughs> Good raise the light up. Mm. Oh, well, we're having a little feast now, and there it is—the hanky, the famous hanky panky chocolate pie. You wouldn't believe the amount of messages I've had when I when I done a B1 video. I don't know, about a year ago, the amount of PMs, DMs I've had saying, where, where did you get the hanky-panky pie, Ben? Now, this one's American pizza, because I know I'm going to get asked again. But look at that, mate. Weight Watchers. I'm going to start it next week. We're all tucking in. Look at this. Just about to see Matt there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nicely. It's like a party in your mouth. <laughs> Happy days. Morning. Um, just gone quarter past seven. I don't know if I sort of went to, told you I went to bed last night. It was pitch black. <sighs> We've had nothing. I've heard that guy there. I think he had a fish last night. Definitely heard his rods. And I saw that. So, but yeah, very, very, very slow. A bit of flicking down here, which I think is perch, pike. I saw a dirty great big pike in front of my swim just before we went to bed last night. Lee's topping up with spoms there, you can see that getting retrieved there, just across the top of the um, bush. Lovely, lovely sky over the back there, pink sky. But yeah, very, very slow. <sighs> very slow. Just reeled in my middle rod and I said to Lee, I'm gonna I've got to play about with something, I just can't sit there, so I'm gonna put two zigs out. Being that Jake isn't it, your mate? Yeah. Yeah, Jake is on St John's at the moment and he's had one on a six foot zig and lost one on a six foot zig. So I'm gonna put a four and a six out. First of all I'm gonna put a four out. Going back to what I was was originally saying, I obviously just brung in my middle rod. Now here's my middle rod and it is absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I fished a combi set up yesterday, quite a long one. I'm fishing at range and then it sits down. I fish a bit of foam on the hook and I was fishing that straight up. That was an 80 mil OG fish with a little sliver of foam and it sits like a little snowman on the bottom like so. But again, that's fine and it hasn't got any claw marks on it. It's got, it, it, it's clean as a whistle. So that's gonna come off like so. Clip that off, clip my new little link on because time is a massive thing here, especially when you're whether you're fishing a match, whether you've got just a day, whether you've got 48 hours, 24, so on. Click on the new link, make sure that's on properly. And then all I, I always fish, and which you probably saw me earlier, and what I'll do is, guys, I'll put up on the screen right now the maggots and how I fish the maggots on. So I've been banging on about that over the duration of the last couple, but it just sits absolutely beautiful off the back. I've got a little white kicker on there to had, add that little bit of aggression a size 8 wide gate hook which are absolutely pinpoint sharp they're perfect and what i do is to finish it off i'll just drop that down my messy messy bivvy i'm going to get some foam in a second i'm going to put a little bit of foam on and that is getting binged <laughs> happy days
So I think a massively important thing that a lot of people don't do when they're fishing is they bing their rods out, and they get the rods and they put them straight down on the pod like that. Put their bobbin on and then walk back into their bivvy. I think, and I go, I know a lot of people that do do this, but people that don't do this, just making sure that you're pushing your tip down and just carefully, not putting enough pressure on to pull your lead off the spot, but just a little bit, just tickling in it. So all you're doing is just taking the bow out if you've got bow in your line. I did then, I'm not gonna lie. And all you're doing is pulling that line tight up. So your line lays 100%. Your bite indication is 100%. And you know if you've got fish on the spot and you're getting your line, is knowing that the line's pinpointed straight to your, your lead every single time because you've taken a bit of time sinking the line and pulling it up your lead without moving that lead off the spot or pulling your rig into, say, um, deposits, weed, etc. Like I said, just take your time, sink the line, and that is a game changer in itself. Definitely an edge when you're on the bank. Right, wow, well, sun is beaming through now. It's absolutely beaming through and um, them zigs are out. <sighs> sort of happy with them, but I'm sort of sat behind not confident rods to be honest, because this is nothing coming out. It's not happening on B1, it really isn't two fish I've seen come out since I've been here in the last what pff, pff, you know 24 hours ish give or take yeah 24 hours so I think me and um, Lee are gonna have a look at St John's because if it's not happening then you need to move and see if we can find the fish so that is exactly what I think we're gonna do so in a minute we're gonna have a little drive around and um, see if we can find some fish see if we can find some pegs and then do the move yes it's time consuming, yes it's annoying, but I'm not one of these anglers that just comes out to just sit behind motionless rods. I want to make it happen, I want to do everything I can within my power alongside Lee to get these fish on the bank. So I'm going to leave it at that guys and I'll touch base with you when I know exactly what's going on. But for now I'm going to leave them zigs another five minutes, they're coming in and then we go on our little walk to try and find these blooming fish. <laughs> This is also something you're up against here at Linear Fisheries on B1. The lovely crayfish. And there's hundreds of the blooming things in here at the moment. Look at them hiding underneath that little platform. Look. And there's one just sitting there in the mud as well. Horrible flipping things. So we are on the move for South Lee. Like I mentioned earlier, if you can't find the fish at Linear, go and find the fish at Linear. So we're going to head to, first stop is St John's. We're going to look over there, see if we can find some fish. Um, we have got some mates over there. Lee's got some mates. I've got some mates as well, to be fair. So it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. But if we can find some fish, put some buckets in some swims, we'll swiftly pack up, head over there, get some rods out, and hopefully do some damage. <laughs> That's mad. So I'm just on the margin here on St. John's and I always love to come over without sort of knocking the angler to my right, obviously who's fishing without disturbing him. But there's loads of fish. Me and Lee just saw an absolute monster down here. But I'll pull them polies right back up again and you can see them. You, well, I say you can see them, you can't quite see them, but they're right underneath that bush there. I've seen, oh my God, oh my God. Look at that coming in. <sighs> two of them, two of them. That's a smaller one at the back there. Wow, 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 wow. And they're, and they're munching as well. They're dropping down. The heads are dropping. I don't think there's much bait down there. Whether they're having naturals or what. Grubs that are falling off the tree, I do not know. But yeah, St. John's. I wish that peg... I, I know for a fact that peg's not going to be free. But um, yeah, exciting stuff. Nevertheless, seeing big fish that close to the edge. So this is where we're at on our travels at the moment. So just round the point is where, I saw, where we saw the fish. People and peg, people and peg, the whole way around. Up here as well, there's people and pegs. This peg is actually free at the moment, um, but it's one of them. I mean, I've got to really see something to warrant jumping in it. But as you can see, it just looks absolutely mega. What a beautiful lake St. John's is, and the plan of action is over the winter time, this year in particular, um, or sorry, going into next year. Um, I want to be up here as much as I can because um, there's some absolute gems in here to be had. I mean, I'd done a 40 last week. I think it was £42 or something or a couple of 40s. So there's, they're, they're in here to be had and some good ones as well. 
some real pretty ones nice dark fish lovely little intimate corner over the back here but yeah mate what a lovely lovely lake so I just popped into the disabled swim there and um, two blokes that watch the channel, two lovely blokes, oh, I tune in every Sunday 7.30, so it really really was nice to meet them and um, one of them's in tea pegs and one of them the peg I seem to like a lot, um, so yeah anyway I'm going to speed up now because I've got a Range Rover waiting up there in SVR and that's very very nice, so yeah heading round now. So I'm back in the swim. Um, it's funny because I've just had a lovely chat with a gentleman um, so now I said to you just before I finish the clip there's a, there's a nice SVR in front of me a nice Range Rover um, sort of parked my car up and the gentleman then drove up drove around and he came oh what's your video I was oh how's it going mate and um, proper sound geezer and definitely someone I'm going to stay in contact with so I had a chat now I'm back in the swim and I'm going to just basically put some zigs out and that's all I can do and um, again he, he said the same he said there was a guy I think the Farlows boys had the whole lake to himself and there was only a handful of people fishing it and they said exactly the same last week nothing has been showing it's just been very unvisible in regards to fish shows and stuff it's just not been great which is not like B1 at all normally you can sit in the evening that seven eight o'clock comes in boom you start seeing them in certain spots or wherever they are on the lake and they're very active um, very apparent move around, get on the fish, do what you need to do, have the fish, but yeah, it's been far from that on this session. But anyway, we're in a good peg. I'm in the point swim or whatever you want to call it, sort of that main bit of the water. So if we do see fish, I've got the flexibility to sort of move rigs around because you do demand quite a lot of water in this peg. So anyway, I'm going to stop the waffle, get this rod out, and then we're all going out on zigs. Happy days. The rods are out, happy with them. In the end, I know I said I was going to put three zigs out, but the middle rod I actually put on a little bottom bait, a little pop-up, with some flossed on little um, maggots on the top, almost looks like a, what do you want to say, the one with the snake head, Medusa, Medusa, that's what it almost looks like, like a little, a little match of the hatch with a little Medusa, 10-15 maggots on the top of that, looks, looks naughty, but yeah, that's on the middle rod, and like I said, on the other two, the right and the left is on a zig, can't do much more than that, still haven't seen no, more, no fish come out, still haven't seen any more shows, Lee's over here now, and he's about to punch one out. I know he's fishing zigs. And, um, yeah, that landed just by them birds, just to the right there. It's on the money, that. Fingers crossed. Whoop. Right, guys, wow. I thought I'd keep you in the loop with what's going on, and to be honest with you, I apologise because this bit, this video is quite bitty. We've jumped on now. It's gone three o'clock last time I looked at the, looked at my phone. But I have been with Lee all day, getting hundreds of pictures. I know we said this yesterday, but obviously Tom's went last night. We had a lo some lovely food together, and the ambitions were today um, were to obviously get loads of product shots. And as you know, this morning didn't have much action, so we thought we'd get be proactive and go and look round and see if we could find the fish. And it was quite apparent that. It's nowhere's really fishing massively well, that being Hardwick and Smith's and also St John's, which are the two lakes that we walked around. So yeah, that's basically where I'm up to the in the it, up to in the video now. And like I said, I've been I've been sat there, we've been doing loads of Wednesday um intimate footage, so we've loads of Wednesday uploads as well. So in a second, what I am gonna do is because I can see out of the corner of my eye, and I think it'd be quite good for you good for you guys I'm gonna go over and pick Lee's brains which is the caravan carper and I'm sure you guys have watched his YouTube channel it's absolutely fantastic he does a tackle Tuesdays there's loads of stuff on there and if you haven't seen that go check him out but like I said I'm gonna go over to him in a second pick his brains and uh, see what bait he's using just see what he's doing and we'll go from there I'll see you in a second righty so I'm heading over here he is the man himself How's it going, mate? Yeah, good, good. So, I, I've just said to the guys, I said, it'd be quite nice to come over and just pick your brain. So, obviously, you're spawning. So, do you mind having a talk through with a few bits, mate? Yeah, no worries. Uh, what really I'm going to do then for tonight is um, we've not really seen anything, in all honesty. So, it's we've not really got anything to go on. So, we've been fishing at 29 wraps, spreading our rods out together. So, we've basically got six rods on quite a tight spot. Um, we've just been putting a mix over 
uh, what we're actually using is a mixture of all different sizes of OG fish and OG fruit uh, especially now putting a shed load more 10 millers in this mix and that's pretty much what I'll go to for winter now yeah. there'll be loads of 10 millers in it you know sure. corn standard and then I've got a bucket of pellets so I'll put a load of that out and then I, I always like to put the pellet out separately for some reason but that's it but no what the scoops bang on to be honest I, I am a big fan of it so bank bug scoop yeah talk to me sir so I always found I've always been someone who uses a scoop like this you right. know and I always find that the end of the session my reel's absolutely manky and I'm a bit of a, a weird old if you've seen me tackle Tuesdays I've got like umpteen amounts of tackle that I keep pristine all the time and I end up having to clean my reels after I've been fishing but with a scoop literally you can have a look there's, there's very little on my rod or my reel and you know what it's like when you're scooping it in all the time and then you're <laughs> flattening it down and stuff like that it's pretty it's like brand new to pretty honest. clean mate <laughs> pretty so damn clean mama, and um what i like about it is literally it's as simple as and you don't really you'd think it don't really look right or it don't really work but it's as simple as that turn it upside down Ooh, terrible video in there no mess you know really very rarely even have to touch the sides don't have to touch out little shake dip it in the water for a bit more weight for the distance if needs be and Love that's that, it is it right to show the so the clip what it does to the clip there mate and i'll yeah, get a so close-up of that because yeah, it's close. quite interesting for people to see so what you've got is as it goes over um you'd obviously do it the opposite way around the clip sits within there so it completely keeps you know you know what it's like the amount of times you threw spod mix all over your bivy and stuff like that you find that this clip is caked up and that's usually the you've either touched yeah. the floor yeah or you've filled the clip aren't you you know what i mean exactly so exactly that and obviously you're not trying to like just trying to scoop it in there it's all over your hand in it yeah totally you agree, know mate and yeah. the only thing that's wrong with these is they don't do them in the bigger sizes so right that, and know, just is it <laughs> i'd have all three if <laughs> hands down they could have me money for all three of them tomorrow <laughs> there you go mate brilliant wow i'm gonna get a cheeky little bit of footage of use spomming out mate but thanks very much for that no worries Whee, on the money <laughs> So there it is, a bit more of an insight on the bank bug scoop. And again, that is at the Parker Bait store, guys, if you want to get yourself one of them. Rod's looking keen. I told you what I'm doing with them earlier. And they're still out in the same spot. But literally, I have not seen nothing come out. I mean, last night I said I saw this guy have a couple. I'm pretty sure he had two, sort of in the middle. But nothing come from here. Matt Catchers was over there. He had nothing. He's gone now. Um, I didn't see any lights come on round here or down the bottom. We just spoke to the bailiff and he did say that there was a lot of fizzing and a lot of coloured water down that end yesterday. But again, in regards to the fish coming out, I'm honestly not sure. I just don't think it's been fishing great. And that's been, like I said, quite apparent the last few weeks, apparently, up here from what I've got knowledge of other people speaking to them. He's still going over there, Lee. He's putting out more bait. Fair play to him. You can a rod that guy. Definitely get back to some more pictures and a bit more video. I'll see you guys in a bit. Right, so we finished all the camera stuff earlier. In the last hour, we've been scratching our heads and we've I think we've come up with something, myself and Lee. So what we've done is, in the end, um, if you can see, where is it? Tip out over here. So on this bit, on the top of this bit here, we're going to fish four rods on that but he's coming in from this angle i'm going to come in from this angle so after leading around flicking the deeper out flicking the deeper out flicking the deeper out and then casting over it with a lead working together we've nailed this spot we know exactly where we need to cast from lee swim from my swim because we've done it practiced we're going to give it last hitch efforts to get something on the bank tonight we're going to put a bit of bait out and fingers crossed we can make it happen but that's the plan of action i'm going to fish two rods on that tonight Tease. Lee's going to fish two rods from this angle. That's four on the spot. Absolute money. And if, well, hopefully it happens. And it's solid as well. You're like pulling it back. It's like... Duh, 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 duh. It's lovely. So, yeah, that's the plan of action. Then right-hand rod, I'm, I'm going to opt to fish out on a zig a little bit further out. And I think Lee is going to do exactly the same. We'll probably play about with depths for the reason of if one of us gets onto something, we can then both adapt, put them out the same, and hopefully 
get a couple of fish on the bank. So there it is, that's the plan of action. I'm going to zip it now and I'm going to take my time now to get this right and then we need to put bait out. We've got to try and do all this and get all the three rods out before it gets too dark. So I'll probably touch base here when it's dark when we're eating our dinner in a bit. Happy days. Right, so dinner time here now. I've got some rolls in my hand to contribute. We've got Lee Ramsey this evening. And the, we've got, what we got mate? Chicken. Chicken curry. Chicken, when it decides to focus. Look at that. Hot. See, it's got the key word on it there, hot. <laughs> and um, in there is the goods. I'll get that over for you. There you go, it looks banging. And then, cool, big bits of chicken as well. And also, I'm gonna have mixed pepper and Lee's got golden vegetables. So that is for dinner tonight. And just just take a moment there. Look at that ridge monkey. I have ne I've never seen one of them before. Um, Lee's mentioned to me they've been out for a while now, haven't they? Yeah, about, about two months, I'd say. Two months. So get in the comments down below if you've seen one of them before. But now I've just noticed the top with the ridges on. So you can actually do a bit of steak on yeah, that, can you, as well? Well. But it's a deep one. So then you can fish, you know, sorry, you can put beans or, as we're doing here, curry. The liquid's not going to fall out the size like a generic ridge monkey. It warms up quicker because it's got the lid. <laughs> Brilliant, mate. What a bit of kit. Definitely need to invest in one of them bad boys. Lovely jubbly, mate. You've done that before, haven't you? It's all over. <laughs> One pound rice. <laughs> well, that's it. Fishing on a budget. Well, I don't know. With a frontier there. Recession <laughs> on. <laughs> and there is Lee rods. <laughs> Lee's rods out there. So again, his right hand two on the spot that we mentioned earlier, and his left hand rods on the zig out there. Ooh. Look at that. <laughs> and she is getting dark quite a mild evening is the only way of describing it not really just a breeze not really sort of going anywhere not enough to sort of chop up the water or anything or push in a corner but it's just a gentle breeze and I am looking forward to my curry <laughs> there it is yeah happy mate thanks very much dinner for this evening with a roll not going to record that I've got a spoon in my mouth lovely jubbly <laughs> right well dinner was absolutely lovely i've got a coffee here now that's my view oh lee's just had a beep um very dark out there but in a second a wednesday upload at the parker brothers youtube channel so half past seven on a wednesday we've started uploading and uh i'm gonna sit down in a couple of minutes and watch that watch the live overly and enjoy that video so i will probably touch base with you now before i go to bed if not hopefully i'll see you before with a fish happy days so lights out for me it's been a long day i just hope tonight i'll get something i'll get a nice scream of absolutely lovely but i'll definitely touch base with you um in the night if i catch anything but if not i'll check out in the morning and um i'm gonna be here there's lee's just got back and um I am going to be leaving first thing. I've got to be off for about nine-ish. And then someone's got a lake exclusive on this particular lake. So back home. Loads of bits to do. And loads of videos to edit. So, night for now. And I'll see you in a bit. Wow. Look at this this morning. Misty, misty, misty. You can't see no more than... Ten wraps in front of you. That's madness. But... Nothing mate, absolutely nothing. Lee's had nothing next door. I've heard them have a few behind on B2. I didn't hear any alarms last night. <sighs> right, is this gonna be the first blank on B1 this year? I think it is. I have got, what's the time now? Just gone half seven, I've got till nine. So I've got an hour and a half to make it happen and I can see there's a lake exclusive on it. And I ain't that confident. So I'm gonna fingers crossed. Hope him pray. And like I said, I'm sure it's not, I'm sorry it's not the longest video in the world, but I will touch base before I leave. Right guys, well that is it. The session is done and unfortunately I didn't catch anything and a, a blank on B1. Oh, gutted. Is what it is, is what it is, and that is fishing. 
and two nice uh, two nice scouser lads jumped straight in and i think they've got it for the next couple of days the people that have got the um the the peg exclusives if you like they've booked out half the lake i think to these gentlemen that are jumping in so um I said, how are you getting on? I said, I don't know, I can't give you no info. I'd have, let, I said, I'd have loved to turn around and said, 25 wraps, just there, line up with that. But that's obviously not been the case. But it's been a very, very productive session. And that is what this session was for, to get plenty of work done with my brother and Lee. So the fishing this time was almost pushed to the side a bit. And that is an excuse. It generally has been. We got loads of footage done, loads of video done, and loads of stuff that will be coming to our social medias very, very soon, which I'm quite excited about. So there it is, guys. That is this Sunday's upload. I hope you've liked it. And I'm, I'm afraid there wasn't any fish in the mix, as you guys know, but hopefully you've enjoyed it. And there's been some laughs in there as well. So there it is. That's this week's video. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Make sure you comment down below. Smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any videos going forward. And I'll see you same time next Sunday, 7.30. All the best. Peace out.